I'm going to make that money, make that money, 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 make that money, 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 make that money, 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 money. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. So when I started the Mischief Airdrop Miner, one of my main aims was to try and remove the pawnification of ROI dApps. That meaning that when you take your cryptocurrency, which, you know, stablecoin, BUSD, BNB usually, put it into the contract, it's locked forever in there, and you're just relying on other people coming in after you so that you can ensure your ROI. That's all well and good, but in a bear market, often there's not so many people who want to come in after you, right? <laughs> it's a problem that we've all come across recently. Um, so by removing the Ponzionomics of it all means that actually the DAP can survive on its own merits because the developer is doing some clever, smart, uh, honest work to maintain. And that is what we're talking about today. So as you know, I did make the Mischief Airdrop Miner, and that is actually going very well in that sense. But we're not focusing on that today. We're focusing on the farm of fortune. I've mentioned this before last week in a short video about ROI dApps. Today we're going to really deep dive it, and I'm going to explain why this could be, could be not financial advice. This is high-risk, high-reward DeFi, right? This is for funds which you can afford to lose. But it could be a huge play, and I'm going to go through a couple of medium articles that I've been reading about it, and why I think it might just be a banger. So here we are on the farm of fortune. This is actually the third farm that the creator of this called Crypto Craig has made. The first was a cake one where he used a rehypothecation in the man I call it mirror pools because it's cooler, right? You know, disco balls and stuff. And he uses the mirror pools, the rehypothecation, to feed back into the TVL. He does that on his cake one. And he also has an elk one, which he does the same thing. But for this one, it's a BNB uh, contract. It's a fixed rate reward ROI DAP, right? But for this one, the idea is that he's going to remove the Ponzi-nomics from it. To use it is extremely simple. You take your BNB on the Binance Smart Chain, you choose a plan, plan three, plan two, or plan one. Plan one is the longest and pays the highest ROI. Plan three is the shortest and pays the lowest ROI. I went plan three and plan one, actually. I put one BNB in each. Here's the proof, as you can see. I did one today. It's running for 199 days, and I've got another one paying 1 1.5. That was plan three, and it's got 82 days left on that. So the big question, how does this remove the Ponzi-nomics from the DAP? When I first saw this, I was quite shocked because I saw that the invested BNB balance was way, way higher than the balance in the contract, which is generally a big red flag. But no, not in this one, because half of the deposited BNB is taken, put into PancakeSwap, and they then earn additional yield on the back end, which is then put back into the TVL. So they're using the invested BNB to create more, right? In addition to that, when you do withdraw your profit, withdrawals are subject to a 3% sustainability tax, which will stay in the contract. So 3% stays in the contract. When withdrawn and reinvestment, this will make a new plan, but increase your daily rewards through compound interest. You can make as many new deposits into different plans as you like, up to 150 BNB max per wallet. So this article on Medium, written by Nelson Crypto Passive Income, I was talking to him earlier, and the reason I'm making this video also is because I'm doing a little bit of a collab with uh, Crypto Craig, because he's allowed me to put up a banner for the Mischief Airdrop Miner, my, my mining dApp here, right? onto um, the Farm of Fortune page, which is great. And in turn, I want him to put one on my page. So we're gonna, we're gonna share it because we're both honest people in this DeFi space, we both respect each other, and that's the way it should be, right? So Nelson is part of the team of the Farm of Fortune. Um, and we're gonna read through why he thinks that this, but he wasn't initially part of the team. He's been asked to join the team because he's written eight Medium articles about it already. It's only been launched for two weeks. So in my time in crypto, I've come across some projects that showed potential and promise, but none as much as the Farm of Fortune, a true diamond in the rough. The idea is brilliant. For every deposit made, 50% is assigned to pools that will generate income to repay each deposit with interest. After a very successful launch, where some 180 BNB were deposited. So the launch was 180 BNB. It's almost doubled that in the two weeks since. Now, if I can give you a little bit of clarity on that, in the last month or two months when we've been dealing with ROI dApps, the first day has always been an absolute banger. And then all the other days after that have been very, very small amounts of deposits. But what's happening on the Farm of Fortune is that you see they've doubled, right? So people are investing more and more. The actual deposits are speeding up. As you can see, day one, right, 57 transactions. Then 
on today, just yesterday, there were 51 transactions. So the actual, the, the, the DAP is building momentum. So 50% of that, it now would be about 150 BNB, has been set into pools to earn income from them. From them, it all just becomes a matter of time. What does that mean? It all becomes a matter of time. Time to grow the pools for them to generate more than what is being paid out. So the aim for the farm of fortune is on the back end in rehypothecation to be growing more <laughs> than is being paid out by the debt. Uh, this is insane, right? With a five day cooldown between deposits and a max seven day accumulation being enough for the project to achieve the objective, we can do better. We can apply the KISS principle of having the community coming together. We can achieve our objective in a faster way, in a more secure way. So the, the cycle of it is you put BNB in, it's the total invested pool. Half of that is sent to syrup pools and fed back in. Half of that is put into the TVL, which is then withdrawn into wallets. There's a 3% tax when it's withdrawn into wallets, but then you're encouraged then to redeposit some of that back into the total invested, right? As these syrup pools grow, that means that they're reinvesting, they're reinvesting more and more BNB back into the total contract. And eventually the total contract will have more <laughs> than the deposited that, to pay out everyone, right? That's essentially how it works. This is the idea. So all we have to do for it to work is to reinvest. Not everything, profit taking is very important. By understanding that less is more, by working as a whole, this project can not only be the first to break out of the Ponzi, but become one where community driven will be more than a fancy word. So here it breaks down some numbers, I'll link it in the description, you can read through this. But what happened is simple, right? After seven days, 24 BNB was claimed out of the contract and 11 BNB was added back in. That's 50%, right? So that represents half of what was projected to leave the contract because people were claiming was not. They reinvested it. Or we can read this article on how to turn 10 BNB into 802 BNB. So let's suppose, right, in this example, you create uh, with a 10 BNB investment, right? And you go into, the 10 BNB will give us 0 0.2 in interest per day per 1 BNB at the end of five days. After claiming and paying the 3% tax, we're left with 0 0.97 BNB. Now we can keep the 0 0.97 BNB and wait five more days to claim, and again continue like that till the end of the 200 days and exit the farm with 38 BNB. So this would be the 200 day plan. Yeah, the highest, the highest ROI, plan one. And then we could exit with 38.8 BNB if everything went to plan. We take those 0 0.97 and open a new deposit, meaning we now have a 10.97 BNB cumulative deposit on the farm yielding 2% a day. By the end of the second week, day 10, we have a 10 BNB deposit that will yield 0 0.97 every five days and a 0 0.97 deposit that will yield 0 0.094 after five days, meaning you're now making 1.06 BNB. Continue to take all interest earned and use them to open a new deposit until we're earning more than five BNB every five days in interest. If we follow the times correctly, we should be earning more than five BNB per day, <laughs> more than five BNB by day 95, that's five BNB per day, just by reinvesting what you're able to claim every five days. Now, I'm not gonna be doing this, but what I do plan to do is to take half, right? So half of what I earn every five days, I'm putting now gonna be putting back into it. So as you can see, I've withdrawn 0 0.75, but I've deposited two, right? So I'm, I have uh, 0 0.64 available. So there's a timer, I can claim any time after two days and 21 hours. So after two days and 21 hours, I will be claiming out of my plan, and then I will be redepositing it back in. Um, at the moment, I have a deposit of 2 BNB. If this starts to go well, right, if I do see this uh, TVL picking up, uh, up to 500 BNB, I'm probably going to throw in a bunch more BNB. And, of course, with most ROI dApps, there is a 2% referral bonus. Check it out, right? This is brilliant, um, and if it does work, that means that the syrup pools, right, that we're talking about will be feeding back into the TVL, meaning that it can maintain forever. This does work. I've been doing it in the Mischief Airdrop Miner, right? So as you can see, the TVL at the moment is $11,000 in the Mischief Airdrop Miner. We broke into 151 investors. Fantastic. Nice, nice job, guys. And if we come to the analytics that I've set up, you can see the TVL, right? Uh, we bottomed at 10, 000, uh, 11,000. We've maintained the 10 to 11,000 uh, TVL now because of the mirror pools. What are the mirror pools? Um, come into my tracking of them. So this is what's happening. I've deposited $36,000 into DeFi projects, Tomb, Grizzly Finance, Horde Trading Bots, 
at Dex Finance, Furio, right? This is earning me yield. The yield I'm taking and I'm injecting it into the TVL of the Mischief Airdrop Miner. It's 3% a day, right? If you do the analytics on it, it's actually 3.2 at the moment. It's paying you out daily on your deposits because I'm sending it to the map. So far, I've sent 9,225 from profits in DeFi back into the TVL. Now, if it's paying 3% a day and there's 11,000 in here, that means that actually all I need to do is to maintain $400 daily being paid into this, and actually it would last forever. <laughs> and the, the APR would just keep up, right? But of course, I don't want to do that. I, I don't have a miracle large enough. But as I continue to compound um, and add in, right, the, the mirror pulls um, into the miner, this is eventually going to balance it out. And that's what I want to do. I, I've wanted to make a community project that buys Drip with the fees, airdrops it to my team, supports Drip because it's my favorite project. It has a charity wallet, we're building a well, and it can maintain its balance and can continue to just pay us out, pay out the community through the bear market. So this is, uh, it does work. It's proven to work. I've shown that it works and it will also work in the form of fortune, I think. And that's why I'm extremely bullish on this project. I have been Crypto Mischief. You guys, as always, have been fantastic. Don't get wrecked. <laughs> you make money, 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 money. money, money, money.